down lane. So we want to make sure if we're trying to control that break point that we move our eyes along with our feet. Great. That was a great shot. Okay, now we have a bowler of very firm speed, kind of a lot of side rotation, but really playing the lanes direct. How can we apply that rule of 31? Well, 40 foot pattern, we want your break point right around second arrow, nine or 10 down lane. So, and, and what we could see from that reaction is that your break point was far too far to the left. So we've got to figure out a way, making moves on the lane to get your break point in the right area. And we don't want to just move your feet and your eyes, everything right. It looks like your feet are probably pretty close. We just want to take your eyes right where you're looking at the arrows and the eyes right a little bit so we can get the ball a little farther to the right down the lane. That was really close on shot two. Where do you think she can move from there, coach? You know, I would maybe even, maybe get your feet, maybe like a one and one right. One with your feet, one with your eyes to the right, and let's see how that reacts. Okay, now that one little bit of moving ended up coming up a little bit of high, so we're really close to our eyes. So probably just want to fudge a little bit of your feet back to the left, and we're going to be in a great spot. Great shot. Which is great. In four shots, now we got you line up. You're going to have room for air. You're going to carry the high hits, the light hits, and you're going to be striking quite a bit in there. That was a great shot. Thanks, Okay, now we have Teresa here, and her style, as you'll see with a lot of lady bowlers, is a little on the softer speed. Right. Um, kind of a good hand rotation on the side and kind of a medium on grabs. It was a very good shot there on the thing, but if we apply the rule of 31 to this pattern, which is a 40-foot house condition pattern, how far out did the ball get out there, Coach? I think it got to right around 10, I'd say. Yeah, it got around 10. So do you think she's going to be able to strike a lot at this angle, or is that going to be a one-time thing? Is this the right place where we want to kind of line her up? I think she might be a little bit too open to the pattern, so her feet are too far left, and she's circling it a little bit more than I'd like to see, even with her softer speed. So she's hooking the ball. She's trying to cover too much of the board, so yeah. if she kind of miss a little bit, she's going to really pay a lot of penalty. We don't want to be so dead accurate right there at the arrows. We want to have about two or three boards at the arrows to be able to still hit the pocket. So which way would we want to move her? I'd like to see her kind of close down her angles a little bit, move further right. So when you say close down your angles, be a little straighter through the front. A little bit straighter through the front, more direct. So pull her eyes a little bit to the left, move her feet a little bit to the right. Okay, let's try that. Okay, I like that through the front a little bit more, but it still came up a little bit high, so we want to find a fine tune that. Even though she struck on that very first ball, I could see that she would be in struggle as the game going. So what do we want to do with her feet, do you think, now? I would move her feet a little bit left, keep your eyes right around the same spot. So maybe move your feet one board left, keep your eyes exactly in the same spot, and I'd, I would think that it will it'll compensate for the amount of hook that you saw on the back end. Because what we're looking for is the overall shape of the shot, you know, and it, it does look like the shape just a little too strong on the back, so we just want to move a little bit left with your feet. Okay. And 
there we go. There we have a really good shot. And that's going to give you more room for air. Get it in a little bit, out a little bit to carry more of your pocket strikes. You're not going to pay the penalty for the little misses. Your style there, I mean, you're a little on the softer side. You have a tendency of the ball wanting to hook a lot. So you're going to see a lot of transitions over a lot of high-speed players. They won't see the lanes change so much. So getting you in a good spot down the lane as far as your break point. And as the lanes change, you just want to kind of start moving your angles in, both your eyes, your feet at the same time. Great shot. Thanks. Okay, Coach, we looked at several different styles and tried to get them lined up. And what we've seen a lot of times on league bowlers, they either trying to hook the ball so much or they're trying to play them too direct on the lane and they're playing the arrows. Right, and you know, the important thing is to figure out your style of play. If you're a high rev rate, lower rev rate, if you have high ball speed, softer ball speed, all of these things are key factors in how you want to attack that break point. And what kind of ball you're using is going to weigh into the, the equation. The key is, is it's not where you're crossing the arrows. Too many players are worried, where are you playing the arrows? It's where are you playing down the lane? Where is that break point and how are we attacking that break point? Right, and knowing that break point based on that rule of 31 is key into high scores right away. Because you can strike from so many different angles and everything, but your room for error is very, very minute. The key to playing that break point you're going to have the room for that little bit of air and you're going to have more consistent scores. How many times have you been bowling in league or a tournament? Think you've thrown a great shot that suddenly goes high and you didn't expect it? The most experienced players that are the most successful anticipate these lane changes and are able to move before they actually happen. We're going to use some of the most state-of-the-art equipment available to us to explain how and why lanes change. Okay, we're now on the International Training Center's research side in front of Earl, which with ball motion study analysis was done. And it helps us get into what we're talking about now is lane patterns. The lane patterns, they put the oil, it's an invisible playing field, but it's constantly changing. It is constantly changing. One of the major factors is simply because of the balls are going down the lane and today's balls, what they're made of, a much duller surface, tend to almost act like a sponge and they attract more oil, actually soak it up and the lane will read as if there's much more friction as the balls go down the lane more and more throughout your match. So what are some adjustments that we could be doing? Well, a lot of times when the lanes change, it has very much to do with the surface of the ball that the player's using. If they're using a pretty aggressive ball, something that will absorb lots of oil, that will pick up the oil, they're going to dry out much quicker and you'll see much, much of a change in reaction. Yeah, a lot of bowlers, they, the lanes change gradually, but they all of a sudden say, oh my, the lanes transition. It's because they missed it. They're, it's always constantly changing. We always want to be aware of what our ball is doing. We want to make our adjustments to, to the break point. Our break point is pretty much going to stay the same place. How we get to that break point is going to be changing. Very differently, yes. And you can do that with release. You can do that with surface of the bowling ball. There's so all sorts of ways that you can change your, your angle in the way the ball gets to that break point. But we do want to control that spot. Yeah, so if the shape looks good and it's just the ball starting to come up a little bit high, then we want to make like what we call a diagonal change of two and one, which will get the ball to the same place at the break point down the pins, just changes our angles to the front. Right, it'll accommodate that early hook that you'll see as the lanes change by moving a little bit more into more head oil, which will give the ball a little bit more push, a smoother surface to play on. And when you're on tournament conditions, when you're used to bowling these house conditions, sometimes we don't want to do these two and ones because the shape looks really good. We want to do what we call parallel moves then, which are like a one and one or a two and two, because we just want to change where the ball finishes. Right, so you're moving, for example, two and two would be two with your feet and two with your eyes in either direction. 
So you want to kind of look at the shape of the shot. If the shape of the shot looks good, it just ended up in the wrong place, we want to make a parallel move. If it looks like it's too much angle or not enough angle on the back end, then we want to make a diagonal move. And you just want to change where the ball is going to finish. Right. Oftentimes, league bowlers make too many what we call abstract moves, and they're moving their feet only or their target only, and that really will change both the shape and the break point. And then they end up getting lost, and they end up getting split, and then we have a three or four holes in the game, and all of a sudden that 200 or that 190 game ends up being that 160, 150. Ask the experts the quickest way to improve your average, and the answer is always the same. Spare shooting. A timely pickup can turn catastrophe really high and the big four into triumph. He moves in off of that, and if he gets a pinch fast, it goes light. Look out! He got it! And on the other end of the spectrum, sometimes the simplest of tasks can become the biggest mistakes. He's got to make it. He's a good spare shooter, but he's got to convert the 10 pin right here. Single pin spare misses it! He missed it! And Duke has won the U.S. Open. Everyone wants to throw more strikes, and that includes me. But the quickest way to improve your average is to be a better spare shooter. Johnny Petraglia once told me that being a great spare shooter wouldn't make me a champion, but not being one would never give me a chance. Here's our staff, and they'll show you some different ways to shoot spares. Getting lined up on your house pattern and throwing strikes is a great thing, just like Amitri is doing. But one of the important things to bowling is spare shooting. Something my dad always told me, make your spares, strikes will come. Spares are going to add pins not only to the game you are bowling, but also to your average at the end of the season. Those extra pins and making spares is going to improve your game overall. teach you about an easy sparing system that you can incorporate into your game no matter what level bowler you are. It's the 369 system. Now the key factor on the 369 system is you already need to be lined up and have your strike target. Ametria is lined up. She has her left foot as a right-handed bowler placed on the 18 board and her strike target is the second arrow. For the two pin she is going to move three boards to the right. That is now going to place her feet on the 15 board, and she is still going to use the second arrow as her target to make the two pin. Amitria is now ready to shoot at the four pin. To shoot the two pin, she was on the 15 board. She will now move three more boards to the right, which will place her feet on 12, but she is still going to use her strike target of the second arrow or the 10 board to make the four pin. We are now going to shoot at the seven pin. Same system. Amitria is now going to move three more boards to the right. She will now be lined up on the nine board and still use the second arrow or the ten board to make the seven pin. The 369 sparing system is also used for spares on the right hand side of the lane. Ametria is lined up for a strike on the 18 board. She is now going to shoot at the three pin. She will move her feet three boards to the left, which now puts her on 21 board, and she will use the second arrow to shoot at the three pin.
To shoot at the six pin, Ametria will now move another three boards to the left, putting her feet on the 24 board, still using the second arrow as her target. Another sparing option is using a plastic ball or a ball that doesn't hook. This is what our elite players use most of the time because it doesn't hook, it takes the lane condition out of play so it doesn't matter what you're bowling on, and once you find your sparing system with the plastic ball, you can use that sparing system no matter where you go. Teresa, one of our elite women bowlers, always uses a plastic ball to shoot at all of her single pin spares. She's going to shoot at a 10 pin. Her starting area is 35 board and she uses the 17 board as her target. Teresa is now going to shoot at the six pin. She's still going to use the 369 system for her feet and use the 17 board as her target because the ball does not hook. She's going to move three boards to the right. Now she'll be on 32 board and still use 17. We are now going to shoot at the three pin. Teresa will move another three boards, which is six boards to the right off of her 10 pin position. So she will now be on the 29 board, still using 17 as her target. For spares on the left side of the lane using a plastic ball, get lined up making the seven pin. Then it's easy from there. Continue to move depending on what pin you leave on the lane, three boards, six boards or nine boards, still using the same target on the lane. We've explained two sparing systems for you. The one using your strike target and your strike ball with the 369 system. This is a great sparing system when you bowl on a house shot same shot every week, things usually don't change. You also probably have a little bit of margin for error, meaning you don't always have to hit your target because the ball always hooks to your spare. That's okay. Using the plastic ball though is definitely the option I would suggest for tournament competition. Sometimes those lane conditions can be a little difficult. Using the spare ball takes the lane condition and the lane out of play and allows you to use the same foot target and target on the lane to make the spares. Good luck. If you're having a good night and throwing the ball well, you might be lucky enough to only leave a few corner pins. Of course, that might not be so good if you dread shooting them. Here's some tips on how to make those pesky seven and 10 pins because, well, USBC makes it against the rules to shoot it this way. A great practice drill to help you with your spare shooting, especially that dreaded seven and 10 pin that gives every bowler problems, is low ball. We have Jean-Marc and Terry here competing against each other in a low ball competition. In low ball, what you wanna do is knock down the least amount of pins every time you shoot at the rack. So this is a perfect, perfect time to practice that seven or that 10 pin. Now, if you use a plastic ball, it's probably a little bit easier because the ball doesn't hook, easier to make those corner pins. But you know what? Change it up a little bit. Use your strike ball. Try flattening it out a little bit. This gives you another option. If you don't want to use your spare ball, you have the option to use your strike ball. It's a game, it's practice, and practice makes perfect.
We all know that the 710 and the Big Four can be virtually impossible to make, but a washout can be made a majority of the time if you approach it the right way. I see most players approach it in completely the wrong way. If you can leave the head pin after throwing your strike ball, you probably don't have any business shooting a washout by trying to hook it. By changing your strategy just a little bit, you can significantly increase your odds of making this spare. Like it's my job. A very common leave bowlers leave nowadays is a washout. And most bowlers try to attempt it using their strike ball and their strike line and try to go over the opposite side. And they rarely have success, maybe 10%. The reason bowlers don't have very much success using their strike ball at the washout is the angle of attack or the angle that you have to hit that hit pin to get over the 10 pin is very small. Think about it like if you're shooting pool, and if you had a pool ball or a ball sitting on the center dot of a pool table, and you're trying to shoot it or cut it into the corner pocket on that pool table over on the right hand side, would you put your cue ball behind the line on the right side or the left side to try to make that shot? Of course you would put it on the left side. It gives you a better angle. So that's what we recommend for you to do at the washout, is throw your spare ball and shoot it from the left. It gives you a better angle of attack and probably, and most likely, more success at picking up that washout. When you're attacking your spares, think of different angles that you want to attack them to give you the best options to be, be able to pick that spare. Sometimes shooting from the left will be more advantageous than shooting from the right. Many of the sport's best will tell you that a strong mental game may be the most important trait a bowler can develop. Kelly Kulik overcame unthinkable pressure to become the first woman to win a title on the PBA Tour. Five in a row. How about that, America? If he goes strike, nine spare, Rhino Page wins his first ever major. On the flip side, distraction, in this case a question about the shot clock used for television shows, can lead to a nightmare. Shot clock's already started. I just got pins. Oh my goodness gracious. Patrick Allen wins. Oh. While bowling is largely considered a physical game, the mental aspect is what normally separates the top players. As Yogi Berra once said, 90% of the game is 50% mental, or something like that. So, getting distracted and losing your focus can be very costly at any level. In this section, we'll talk about ways to keep your mind focused and on task so that you can perform at your highest level.